Hi, I'm Jamie Cullum and we're in my studio, um, the very messy studio. So, uh, you know, what got me first into music was listening to music. Um, and that sounds kind of obvious, but I think like most young people, you know, you, you just fall in love with bands and with music and it kind of, um, it kind of informs your personality, I think. So I was, um, you know, at a very young age, you know, I was listening to Michael Jackson and Bross and kind of, you know, pop stuff. And then as I got a bit older and more self-conscious, I think I really kind of started going for the rock bands and indie bands like Nirvana and Soundgarden, Red Hot Chili Peppers, stuff like that. So um, Ned's Atomic Dustbin, um, The Wedding Present. So I was into all these bands and my older brother, Ben, was, a, was a, uh, playing music. He, he learned some piano at school and he was playing guitar too. I think when I started trying to pick up an instrument, I just I took, I took to it quite quite easily. Certainly the rhythmic part of it, um, I found the technique really difficult because I had such small hands. But uh, um, I could quite soon pick out a, an easy tune, and that as soon as I did that, I was very inspired really quickly. I got really into really quite heavily into rock music and particularly kind of heavy metal music a bit later, and I think I realised that. Um, I was really falling in love with uh, uh, musicianship and uh, a certain kind of uh, mastery of the instrument, uh, like solos and stuff and, and uh, speed of, of being able to play. And uh, you know, when I found out that they played even faster guitar solos than jazz, I was, I was in for the ride. I would always fast forward solos to the guitar solo, for example. At a certain point in my life, I was definitely I was fascinated with the ability to do really clever things on instruments. Some people, uh, I, I'm different now, I, I'm not, I'm not a, as obsessed with that anymore, but um, that was definitely something that I was drawn to. You know, a really important record for me when I was growing up was um, DJ Shadows introducing, and um, that was the first, the first record I heard that brought together, I was into loads of different things when I was growing up, and you know, hip hop and kind of sampled music really brought a lot of things together in my mind. I thought, well, it, you can bring all these things together. Um, you know, that, that was an incredible record. I mean, and I went through the list of the things he'd sampled for that record, and suddenly my record collection went from that to that. You know, I was then buying Miles Davis and Bollywood scores and, and you know, all this breakbeat stuff and German techno and, and you know, LA hip hop and Stone's Throw stuff. And, you know, it, it was a real kind of opening for me. First song I liked to play was um, was this. And um, the reason why I'm showing you that is because I based a new song on my new album around that, which goes like this. I don't think that first tune has a name, but it's just it's the Knuckles tune. I'd forgotten about that tune until I was hanging out with a, um, my friend's four-year-old the other day, and he was doing that on the piano. And I remembered I used to play that. And um, I played it, and I, I, I love the cyclical kind of nature of it. And I ended up writing a song called Wheels. Um, it's called The Wheels of Falling Off the World. And it's, it's, you know, it uses the same notes and the same kind of principle behind that tune you learn when you're a four-year-old. Um, I heard it through the grapevine is um, the, the best tip I could give is laying back on the tempo. You know, there are some things where you need to stay on top of the tune, and I heard it through the grapevine means you've got to, you've almost got to count like a beat behind everyone else, especially if you're the singer, and um, not the drummer, but if you're kind of singing it and playing it, you know, the piano is very on top. You know, that's really on the beat, but the, the vocal is. is it's supposed to be behind you, very laid back. So that that would be the that would be the tip. I, that that way, that way it's going to sound like it's supposed to sound, as opposed to a, a bunch of people who are just learning how to play the song. You know, that's where it slips over into it sounding good, laying back on the tempo. Well, it's funny because uh, Kylie got in touch with me. She was doing some big award show, and she wanted to do a lounge piano version of "I Should Be So Lucky." Um, and uh, she asked me to do it, so I kind of learned the tune and, and just kind of 
pretended I was in a piano bar and kind of played it back to myself. And that was really fun because obviously she knows that tune really well and I gave a different spin on it. It made her sing it differently. Um, so she was willing to let go of the tune the way she's been singing it for the last 20 years. And uh, I was willing to kind of put a new spin on it. So that's kind of an example of a, of a collaboration kind of working out. The thing, about, the thing about jazz is that you don't have to play it the same way every time. And I think anyone who picks up an instrument or comes to a piano for the first time goes like this. You know, they kind of just, they just play anything, right? And um, with jazz, what you do is you learn a language. It's like learning French or like learning English or whatever. And you use that language to say what you feel. Um, so it's just like having words um, and learning them from a dictionary and then putting them in your own kind of order. I think that's the exciting thing about it. You can really, really express yourself and really, uh, really say something kind of through the instrument. And, uh, you know, that is, a, that, that is a great thing. So it doesn't have to start off complicated. You can just start off with, I mean, everyone should start off with the 12 bar blues, um, which is really simple. It's just three chords. It's Gradually, you start adding bits on the top. You can get more complicated. kind of sounds really complicated by the end but really you just start off from three chords and uh, knowing the notes to play over those three chords and then you can put them in any order you like and that's when the fun kind of really starts and if you just build it up block by block it can be it can be one of the most kind of freeing feelings playing an instrument knowing that you can you have this language to express yourself over a sequence of chords I think um, Nothing makes perfect, um, practice helps, but I think thinking of practice as something bad is, is, is the enemy. Um, you know when, you, when you, you finish school and you go and play football with your mates and it's, a, it's great fun, but actually you're getting better at football, that's what practicing should be like. It should be like, I feel like playing some piano. I mean, I practice every day for a long time, but it's because I'm at the piano playing songs that I like and doing things that are moving me towards becoming a better player without just sitting there and doing boring stuff. I mean, even if you're doing scales, which you should, and arpeggios and stuff that you, you learn to improve your technique, it should always be interspersed with learning a song, you know, maybe learning a classical song that you love, or maybe you're learning a theme tune from, from Star Wars or from The Simpsons or something, and you're using your ear, you're using your brain. And, or maybe you're learning a song that's going to impress this girl at school that you really like or something. So it needs to be, it needs to be something that feels as though you are, um, you've got to have fun with it because if you're not having fun with the music, then, then you're not going to do it. And uh, I, think, I think that's the key to learning an instrument. Does it ever feel like a chore? Um, no, never. It doesn't ever feel, not, playing the piano is, is, is never, I mean, ne neither is breathing, you know, so, um, yeah.